In this lecture, we'll look at how we can represent digraphs in a computer. Throughout, we'll use the convention that a digraph has n nodes that are labelled from 0 up to n minus 1. We'll consider two representations of digraphs. The first is an adjacency matrix. It's an n by n matrix with Boolean entries, so just 0 and 1, where we have a 1 in the ijth entry of the matrix if there is an edge from i to j. Otherwise, there's a 0 there. For example, the adjacency matrix for this digraph is a 3 by 3 matrix, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, where the 0, 0 entry is 0, because there's no loops allowed, the 0, 1 entry is 0, and the 0, 2 entry is 1 and so on. And here's the completed matrix. The second representation is an adjacency list representation, which is a list of n lists, one for each node, where the ith list simply lists all of the out neighbors of node i. So to return to our example, the adjacency list representation has the zeroth list simply listing the out neighbors of node 0, that's node 2. The first list lists the out neighbors of 1, to 0, and 2, and so on. To make the adjacency lists easier to read, we'll often label the lists with the node labels, but they are not part of the actual representation. So we could equally remove them and still have an adjacency list representation. We'll use the convention that the adjacency lists are sorted. I emphasize that this is only a convention, and many authors or implementations do not make this assumption. These representations work just fine also for graphs where the edges are bidirectional. This graph, for example, would have an adjacency list representation as 0 going to 1, 2, 1 going to 0, and 2 going to 0. And an adjacency matrix representation has the 3 by 3 matrix uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0. Either of these representations allows multiple digraphs to be stored in a single text file by having the first line of the file being the order of the digraph, n say, the next n lines are then the n adjacency lists, or n rows of the adjacency matrix. The next line is the order of the next graph and so on until all digraphs have been listed and a line denoting a digraph of order 0 marks the end of the file. For example, with the graph shown here, with these adjacency lists, we can represent them in the single file by first writing the first graph. So on the first line of the file, we'll have the order of that graph, 3, followed by the three adjacency lists. Then we'll have the order of the next graph, that's 4, followed by the four adjacency lists, gap, 1, 1, and we'll finish the file with a graph of order 0. The representations mentioned here are very general and work for arbitrary digraphs. But if we're dealing, say, with a class of digraphs with a very particular structure, we may want to use a more specialized representation. For example, a rooted tree with n nodes is a species of digraphs, but it can be stored in an array of length n. So we've seen this in earlier lectures, but let's look at an example. For example, this tree with five nodes is stored in an array of length 5 by storing the ith position of the array, the parent of node i. Or if i has no parent, as in the case of the root, we can just use null or minus 1. So the representation here would be uh, minus 1 here, 1 has parent 0, 2 has parent 1, 3 has parent 1, and 4 has parent 0. So that's the tree stored in a nice compact array.
Let's now have a brief look at how we can implement adjacency matrices or lists, and then we can interrogate these structures to decide which may be more efficient in particular contexts. So we'll start with adjacency matrices. These are just standard matrices, so they can be implemented as, a, as a, an array of arrays. Adjacency lists are just lists of lists, but there are several options we have for implementing a list, including as an array, as a singly or doubly linked list, or even more exotic implementations. Obviously the choice of implementation matters to performance, since, for example, accessing an element in an array is constant time, but order n in the worst case for a linked list. In our discussions here, we'll consider doubly linked lists. Now, whatever the context you are using digraphs in, you'll probably want to perform basic operations like checking for the existence of a particular arc, finding the in or out degree of a node, or adding and deleting arcs and nodes. So let's compare the running times of these operations using adjacency matrices and adjacency lists. Let's look at a couple of examples of basic operations. First, we'll look at the steps involved in finding out how many out neighbors a node has. In an adjacency matrix, the out neighbors of node i are all the entries in the i throw of the matrix that are one. So we just need to scan through the i throw, counting the ones. For example, to find all out how many out neighbors there are of one, we scan through the first row and we see one, two, three. It's a square matrix, so we need to check n elements to see if they are zeros or ones, making it a theta n operation overall. In the adjacency list representation, the out neighbors of node i are exactly what are listed in the ith adjacency list. So we just need to find the length of that list. So to find the number of out neighbors of node 1 here, we just need to look at how many items are in that list. And for standard implementations of a list, we can find its length and constant time. So we have um, big theta 1 for the list representation. Suppose we want to delete arc ij. In the adjacency matrix, the operation is simple. We go to the ij element, we flip it from a 0 to a 1, the amount of work is clearly theta 1. So to delete any arc, for example, from 4 to 1, we go to the fourth, um, find the 4, 1 element here, and we'll turn that into a 0. That amount of work is clearly theta 1. For adjacency lists, we need to find and remove j from the ith list. How long that takes depends on the length of the list, that is the number of out neighbors of node i. So if we say i has d out neighbors, Simply finding j in the list requires looking through possibly a whole list of length d, and that'll take time d. Once found, removing j from the list is a constant time operation, so overall the amount of work we have is um, theta d. So we've seen two operations and differ differing performances for the two data structures. Um, let's look at this table then and look at a, uh, the performance for a wider range of operations. So these are the two we've looked at so far. Um, finding the out degree of i, so that was um, big theta n for an adjacency matrix, and uh, constant time for an adjacency list. Deleting an arc was constant time for a matrix, but um, big theta d, where d is the length of the adjacency list for node i, um, in the uh, list setup. In many cases we see this behavior repeated. For example, for adjacency matrices, matrices we often inspect a whole row or column, um, so we get a big theta n operation. Uh, 
sometimes we can go directly to the element we're interested in in the matrix and we get a constant time operation. For example, finding if an arc ij exists, we just look straight at the ijth entry of the matrix, that'll take constant time. With adjacency lists, operations are sometimes constant time, for example, finding the out degree as we've already seen, adding an arc, right, so we're just adding something to the end of a list, um, or adding a node is just adding a new list. Uh, but sometimes it'll depend on the length of the list, for example, if we're um, looking to see whether an arc exists, or deleting an arc, as we've seen. Uh, and sometimes we'll even have uh, the operation depending on the entire size of the graph. For example, trying to find the in degree of a node, we need to search through every list in the graph to find the uh, node i that we're interested in. Um, both for adjacency matrix and adjacency lists, um, deleting a node is a high cost operation. In this case, it'll be order n squared or order n plus m for a um, adjacency list, where m, of course, is the size of the digraph. In general, then, adjacency lists are more dependent on the sparsity or density of the graph. So they'll be more um, time efficient when we're dealing with a, a sparse graph, but with when we're getting towards a dense graph, lists are more um, comparable or even slower than the adjacency matrix setup. But of course, time is not the only limited resource. We all know, also need to consider um, space requirements. So let's finish it off by looking at space requirements for adjacency matrices, matrices and adjacency lists. First, Adjacency matrices are simply n by n Boolean matrices, so they simply require n squared bits to store. How about lists? Well, on the face of it, we might guess that uh, adjacency lists require theta uh, n plus m bits to store, since there are n lists and the combined total length of the list is m, which is the number of arcs. But is that correct? This would appear to give a very clear advantage in terms of space to adjacency lists over adjacency matrices, you know, even for you know, very dense digraphs. But if we look more closely, um, well, we are storing single bits in the adjacency matrix setup and lists, we're storing node indices, right? So we've got lists like, you know, 1, 2, 4, 0, 3, 6, 9, 0, 2, 4, uh, 2, 1, etc. So in the lists, we're storing node indices, which are numbers between 0 and n minus 1. Now, the number k, on average, takes more than one bit to store. In fact, K typically requires um, big theta um, log of K bits to store. Now, what is the size of the average index in this list? Well, it's going to be n over 2. So the total space requirement for the adjacency list is not big theta n plus m. It's more like big theta n plus m log n over 2, which is the same as log n. Now, for reasonably sparse digraphs, we still have a much smaller space requirement for lists than we do for matrices. But as you start dealing with denser and denser lists, these, sorry, denser and denser digraphs, these two come much closer together in terms of space requirement. Now, as always, which implementation is best for a particular problem will depend a lot on the specificities of that problem. I should mention also that uh, implementing the list structure is probably a little bit more work than implementing the matrix structure. But in general terms, and certainly in this course, we'll work mainly with adjacency lists, which typically have um, superior performance for common operations in terms of speed and space
so long as the digraph is reasonably sparse.